Western world is quite confused about consciousness in ways in which many other, other cultures are not. And I suspect that's a little bit uh, the product of Christianity and later on enlightenment, which uh, both basically um, Christianity indoctrinated uh, people with a notion of reality that doesn't work and enlightenment tried to debug it in the wrong way. And uh, the notion that we got out of this is uh, this uh, disparity between idealism that we live in a dream and physicalism that there is a causally closed mechanical layer um, at the bottom. And uh, the Western world is confused about how to put this together. And uh, typically we have this Cartesian view and most people are actually Cartesians. Uh, so I think there is the extended world with the objects inside of them, res extensa, and then there's the world of idea, res cogitans. And the uh, res extensa is associated with physics and res cogitans with mental events. And uh, then there's the, uh, the question of how are they related? And then people uh, meditate or take acid and they discover, oh my God, uh, uh, I am actually the universe. And so universe itself is conscious and panpsychism is true. And uh, what they discover instead is that uh, they, the delineation between self and world in the mind is artificial. They're both in the mind. They uh, both are generated by the same game engine. And this insight is very old and it's actually a uh, part of our culture and it's encoded in the story in Genesis 1. Genesis 1 has been appropriated by the Christians and turned into an origin creation story for the physical universe, right? The, the Christians teach people that Genesis 1 is the story of the creation of a physical universe by a supernatural being. And uh, so if we uh, read Genesis 1 with correct epistemology, uh, you uh, um, it's a slightly different story. And uh, I think it's actually not a story about the universe creation, but a six stage theory of conscious experience and personal self development. Uh, what uh, happens in that uh, story when you read it is that the Ruach Elohim, the creative spirit, is uh, hovering over the surface of the water. And then it creates a firmament that separates the waters above the firmament from the waters below the firmament and stuff like that. And it all makes no sense. And I suspect the word that was mistranslated here as water is actually substrate. So let's uh, revisit this. We have a creative spirit that is forming over a substrate and hovers over the substrate. And the substrate is without form and void. There is no world yet, just chaos. And the first thing that the creative spirit discovers is how to make light. Not really light, contrast. It makes that contrast by getting oscillations out of the neurons in a targeted way and uh, associating the intensity with brightness and the flatness with darkness, with the color of the day and with the color of the night. Now it has a scalar dimension with which it can create difference. And uh, then it can take that difference and apply it to uh, representing spatial regions. And what it also does, it uh, separates res extensa from res cogitans. Res extensa is the world of the world model, right? It's the uh, model of reality, what is the case outside of you. And then the world of ideas. And these are separate domains of the same mind. Res extensa and res cogitans coexist in the mind, not one in the world and one in the mind. They're both parts of your mind. The world model is part of your mind. And uh, next thing it just does, it uh, arranges these distances that it has discovered uh, by taking a scalar value and uh, evaluating it as an extension into multiple dimensions. So it combines multiple extensions into dimensions. And the first space that this uh, covers is the plane. And the plane gets associated with the ground. And first babies only crawl around on the ground and they refuse to build towers because they cannot sink in 3D. They only arrange things in 2D. And at some point they discover the third dimension, they start to build up. And uh, so they discover the sky over the pla uh, this ground plane and now have a three dimensional world. And they um, discover how to populate this mental game engine with objects. So they discover how to model solids and liquids and organic shapes. And it's all described in Genesis. Uh, and then they discover illumination. They discover uh, the constancy of shape and they discover the nature of light sources and they discover the big light in the sky and how it changes over time and how it, things change their appearance and response. 
And then uh, once that is done, it uh, discovers how to construct all the plants and animals and people and give them all their names. Right? Again, uh, the construction of plants and animals is not something that happens out in the world. It happens inside of the mind. And giving their names is also nothing that happens in the creation of physical objects. It's something that happens once you arrange all these patterns in your mind, you name them, right? And you learn the names of these objects. So you learn the language that you use to refer to all these objects. And uh, the next one it discovers is uh, that the purpose of the whole exercise is to interact with the world and to control it. So this creative spirit creates another spirit in its own image, but it creates it as man and woman. It creates it in such a way that it thinks it's a person. The creative spirit is not a person. Your mind is not a person. It's just a modeling system. But it discovers that it needs to model a person. It needs to create a personal self. And this personal self has, in some sense, the same powers as the original creative spirit, but it forgets them. It forgets them. It's not able to edit its own reality, because otherwise it would cheat. So uh, it thinks it's the person. It thinks it has social relationships. It thinks these social relationships are important. It thinks it's super important what other people think about it. It thinks it's very important what itself thinks about it, right? This is what makes it human. And uh, this person emerges roughly around two and a half, three years old. And you notice that this is the age when kids start to consistently talk about this first person character from a first person perspective, no longer from the third person, and start to organize the memories from this new person perspective. So they have childhood amnesia. They don't remember the things that happened before, not because their brains are mushy. You can basically uh, look at a uh, young child, a toddler, they have perfect memories. They can refer to things. And then they suddenly forget all of that, things that happened before a certain crucial age. And I think this is when the new spirit takes over, the one that is created in the image of the first. And I think this is the reason why you have this confusing statement that God created people in its own image. Right? It's, it refers to that spirit, to the software agent that is built into the engine to perform the reflection. The neurons don't know what it is like to feel anything. Their physical systems, brains cannot feel anything. Physical systems cannot have experience, right? This is correct. But it would be super useful for the brain to know what it would be like to be a person that feels something. So this person is created virtually as if our experience is virtual. There is no person. There is only what would it be like as uh, if there was a person. And what would that person feel if that person cared? And what would that person think as a result of those feelings? And what would it want as a result of having those feelings? And what would it do as a result of wanting these things and having this model of what it could be doing? And then we use the output of that model to drive behavior. And we are inside of that dream, inside of that model. And outside of that model, there is no consciousness. If you wake up from the dream, you would not be there. So I think this personal self is an intermediate stage. It happens after you are well organized enough to discover that you have a self, but before you're well organized enough to deconstruct it again. So our personal consciousness is intermediate. And the older we get, the more we deconstruct our qualia. And I suspect that if we would be living for a few hundred years, uh, we would not be conscious in the human sense. <laughs>